Dr. Cox, local food is a hot new trend and media and consumers seem to say that they think it's safer and more environmentally sound and, and results in fresher food. What can you tell us about locally produced food and how it might be the same or different from food that's shipped further in greater distances? Well, it's certainly a popular trend right now. There's a lot of popularity to supporting uh, your local economy and, and your region and even your state um, with your dollar and with, with what you eat. Um, certainly red meats and poultry are no exception to that. Um, there's, there's certainly an appeal to if you want to eat Nebraska beef, if you want to eat Georgia chicken, if you want to eat um, pork from, from Minnesota. I mean, it's, it's the thing that supports your state, so that's the popularity of it. There are some misconceptions that it can somehow be friendlier to the environment, um, which isn't always the case and, and oftentimes is not. What are the facts about environmental impact? Talk to us about that. Well, there are efficiencies in, the, in larger operations in traditional agriculture that have sort of developed over the years that, that have improved the way that we produce our food and, and make it more efficiently. And so when we go to local foods, we do step back in efficiencies. We're looking at smaller scale and we can't take advantages of some of those, those efficiencies and economies of scale. What about food safety? Is there a difference? Uh, fundamentally speaking, the, the microorganisms that will make people sick do not understand the difference between local, uh, local foods and, and traditionally produced foods. So um, on its face, and, and it's really not. Are livestock and poultry produced everywhere? I mean, can you buy locally produced livestock and poultry regardless of where you live? Right, and that's, that's the other thing is uh, different regions of the country are not suited to, to the livestock that are produced there. You see the corn which is raised in the Midwest is what we're feeding our livestock and they, the environments, the temperatures that are in the, the Midwest and throughout the Southeast and Southwest are, are conducive to livestock and that's where they're going to be raised. So you're, you're going to have a hard time finding that type of, of crop further away from those environments. So I guess it would be pretty tough to get Alaska produced poultry for example. Exactly. Um, what other things should we know about the local issue? The local issue is, is a little bit more complex than, than simply the production of the animals. And when you talk about transportation costs and things like that, when you've got to truck from long distances, that's certainly um, one thing to consider, but you also have to consider that that's being done in large scale and done efficiently. And so locally produced food is typically going to be using smaller vehicles and making more trips. Um, and there can be some inefficiencies to that as well, which, which can be less friendly to the environment. Well, what's a consumer to do? They're, they're under a lot of pressure to just buy local. What should they do when they're out selecting meat and poultry? We typically make the same recommendations as we do when we talk about their dietary guidelines. Moderation um, being the key. Um, trying to support when you can your local, your local institutions and, and certainly your local agriculture. Trying to balance that if you can. But, but you're not going to be able to find all types of food products in all places. So um, you're not often able to do that completely um, if you're looking for a variety in your diet. So certainly uh, support local when you can. But, but traditional Traditional agriculture is certainly great as well. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Thank you.